Wow, it's been a while. Um, just, I just want to open up by saying I, I just, uh, just, you know, thank you for the opportunity. It's, it's, I think it's probably been a year um, since I, since I've been up here. Um, and you know, um, I guess I'll start off by saying this: um, uh, if you're gonna listen to, you know, we're in this series twice. Listen to Sean's. <laughs> It was, um, uh, there's a lot of what he brought last week that was just, you know, phenomenal, and I, I just really want to give honor to that, and um, also, I, I had to call Scott this morning, I mean, so here, here's my, here's my notes, <laughs> um, so I was, you know, before the Lord about today, you know, you know, since, since he asked me to, to start off the year, um, you know, Lord said to me that, you know, this week, he said, you know, give him the word of your testimony, and I was like, uh, <laughs> Boy, I don't know about that. I must have misheard that. Um, but he's backed it up because he's given me nothing else, right? Um, so, yeah, the topic is identity, our identity in Christ. And we'll stay on topic. And if you want to run to Luke 22, I'll meet you there. Um, but, you know, you know, probably quite a few people, you know, here today probably haven't heard me speak much. And I haven't, you know, been around much. And I thought I'd kind of give you an update of where I'm at um, and where I stand right now. Um, and, and in full disclosure, um, vulnerability is a good thing. And one of the things I, we, we really want to greatly admire in our leaders is their ability to be vulnerable. Because what it, what it, what it should do is it should give us permission to be vulnerable. Um, you know, quite honestly, I mean, we use the words, um, you know, in the fivefold, we use the words apostle and prophet and pastor and teacher and evangelist. Um, you know, I stand in front of you today this very day, this very minute, probably a lot like Elijah in the cave. Um, Scott, or Sean said last week, um, he made a good point. Um, we spoke, uh, we had a prophetic word for the house in 2020 about this being a, um, an era, an epoch, epic, however you want to pronounce it, of reconciliation. And, you know, Sean made the point, and then, you know, suddenly, you know, you know, quote, all hell breaks loose, unquote, and it really did, right, 2020. We bring this in January, and by February, uh, you know, COVID hit with a whole new round of, of, of things to be divided over. Um, you know, we lost George Floyd in May. Um, you may know I did go to George Floyd's funeral by invitation. Uh, we had, in 2020, cities burning down. Um, you know, in 2021, you know, we have all new rounds of ways to be divided and disagreement, um, you know, fighting over vaccinations and masks and all kinds of stuff and, and critical of one another who have a different view of things. So from a visual, you know, we have to understand, you know, if this is reconciliation, that's gotta be, that's gotta be a head scratcher for some of us because it doesn't necessarily feel like reconciliation. Um, and in 2021, for me personally, um, and, and I haven't been around much, um, it was a year of tragedy. Ah. I knew it was, I don't, I don't know how much I want to share. Uh, in February, I lost my boy, um, who violently took his life. Um, I was actually on my way to meet with Scott at 9 o'clock on a Thursday morning, and I got the call, and in the background was my dearest friend shrieking. And I raced there, and I don't want to tell you what I saw. I don't want to tell you about the day. Um, I still don't reconcile that. Um, and that began almost like a cascade of, of things. Um, here I do travel coast to coast and north to south on this thing called, we call suicide prevention. I mean, I, and, you know, I've retired professionally to, um, to donate our time together, I guess. Um, to this plague, and um, and I lose my own boy. I don't know how to reconcile that so much. And that began a process of racing to the cave over the last uh, the last year, and um, uh, just domino effect. It just felt like trauma after trauma after trauma after trauma in 2021, and I just kept getting on an airplane, and um, you know a lot of people around me suffering pretty hard. Uh, I just kept getting on an airplane. Um, in July, or no, September, um, my mother contracted COVID. Um, 
uh, we lost her in 10 days. Uh, the first, you know, six, seven days looked like things were, were okay. And, and she, she, we lost her in two or three. Um, and I was at an event in September uh, in, uh, in a field in Virginia with about 140,000 people with a bunch of our warfighter veterans. And I couldn't get away. Um, and, you know, so I got the news about my mom. And I walked away for five minutes, and I came back. And I just got, went back to work. And, uh, and then just to kind of wrap up the year for me, this last, so Nicholas, my boy, was my hunting partner. You guys probably know a little bit about me. I'm going to be a little vulnerable here. We are going to talk about identity because honestly, it's probably the only reason why I can stand on here is this topic on the stage today. I did tell Scott, Scott said several times last year, um, Dave, if you have anything, bring it. And I said, nah, I don't think there's anything I have to say anybody wants to hear. Um, and um, I'm probably in that same place today. <laughs> um, we're going to cover some ground that you may have heard from me before, if you've heard from me before in Luke on identity, but um, maybe I'll, maybe, maybe what we can do is quantify why it's important, why it's important to heaven with our own stories, right? Um, this last Thursday wrapped up the season. Now, Nicholas was with me on my land every year. He was my hunting partner. I've never had a young man, I've never had anybody that had the admiration and the hero worship that this boy had for me. And it was mutual. And so Thursday, the end of the day, I stood on my land and I'm looking and spent the day with him, the year with him out there. And I, I really lost it, right? Not my field. I'm just sobbing. With no tears. I mean, my allotment for tears in 2021 was gone. I want, if you can smile, it's okay. Right. You got to be able to smile. And I'm not talking about a sense of humor smile. I'm talking about identity in Christ smile. Um, and I, I sat out there and I just heaved, but no tears came out. I was like, man, I'm, 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 you know, where's the tears? And I felt like the allotment of tears for 2021 was used up. And maybe you got a whole new fresh batch of it for 2022. But I... I found for sure that I was, uh, I was Elijah in the cave, and it's a remarkable story. At one point, you know, Elijah goes to the cave, and I, I, sometimes I feel like God and Jesus up there, you know, talk about us, and, you know, I, I insert my personality into theirs, so it's be something like this, you know, there goes Elijah to the cave, and God goes to Jesus, where's he going? He says, I don't know. He goes to the cave. If you know the story in Ruth in uh, First Kings 19, finally God says, "Well, I'm just going to ask him myself. What are you doing here?" And he, so I I feel like God is now maybe right now um, finally saying to me, "Dave, what are you doing here?" Because because it was all through the year the demands we find when we're in trauma, when we're in uh, stuff, the demands don't go away. I mean, people still demanded access. My phone still kept ringing, right? I mean, it was like, okay, Dave, you had a, you've had some tough stuff here, but we got work to do, right? And, and, and full disclosure, the leadership team here has been marvelous. So this didn't happen here, but life itself never stopped, right? The phone didn't quit ringing. The demands of time didn't quit. It wasn't like, hey, I'm going to cut this guy some slack. There was more like, yeah, but, right? So I, I don't... I had a hard time uh, processing it. So by the, ten, the end of the year, I was like, man, I got a mantle for sale, right? You know, I'm like, uh, if anybody else wants this mantle, it's up for great. I don't even want to take bids. I just want a show of hands. Does anybody want this mantle? Because at, at the end of the day, to me right now, the price seemed higher than I was willing to pay. And that's where I'm at. Now, I, I'd love to say there's a, there's a, like, now I'm on the other side, but I'm not. I'm in it. Uh, joyfully, I'm in a place where he's, where God, I feel like, is saying, okay, wh wh what are you doing here? And I open up identity with that on purpose. Is there a, it's like, like, like tissues or something kicking around here somewhere. I'm leaking. 
I didn't think I was going to. I thought my allotment of tears was probably used up, so I'm surprised by that. It's a... Thanks, man. It's funny when we talk identity, if we do this in a, in a culture a lot, right? Our LinkedIn bio or something, right? If we, if we talk identity, and, and you guys probably know, if you've heard me a lot from maybe 15 on, right? So one of the things, oh, hey, I might use them all. Yeah. In, in, uh, in 2015, in January, Scott opened up the year and he recommended that we, um, for, the month, for the month of January in 2015, we wear, read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, I read it for 18 months. I read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Matthew, Mark, Michael would know this, Matthew, Mark, Mark, John, over and over and over for 18 months. And out of that reading came what is coming out is the next book on jurisdictional authority. Um, and what I... What I found is I'm going to kind of present some of this today. Um, our identity in Christ, we're going to keep putting it that way, right? And I, I don't have, like, the flip side of that. So if our identity in Christ is this, what is our identity outside of Christ? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I, I actually was thinking about that. I thought, well, all right, let me, let me take a stab at that. And I don't know how to, I don't know how to, uh, I don't know how to quantify that. So when I'm talking about my identity in Christ, I'm talking about how does God see me. In Revelations, it's an interesting thing. Revelations 2-ish, I think, somewhere, one of the churches, God says, and I have given you a new name, right? I used to, I used to say a lot, things like, I'm a son of the Most High God, empowered, you know, brother and friend of Jesus, right? This is, this is great stuff. I mean, can you imagine if somebody on your LinkedIn page, you said something like that, you know, bio, son of the Most High God, you know, friend and partner, with Jesus, uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and empower and and um, and um, and uh, empowered by the task that He knows your name by, right? And He's got a name, like so. I don't think God really. I mean, He calls Scott Scotty. I don't. I don't know necessarily what He calls me. Sometimes I feel like He might call me Goofy a few times. But identity, man. I feel like identity is something that mankind almost can't get. I, it's easy to say that, in, that with our identity, right, who God sees us to be is one thing of us individually. But look at it from a worldwide perspective. I mean, it's pretty clear. It, it, hopefully, I mean, it, it, it's almost abundantly clear that mankind itself is relatively, as a herd, is relatively clueless on what their identity is. Yet God, God sent, set a plan in place, and, I, uh, uh, and this is kind of where we'll go with this in, in Luke 22, 20, 22 is where it starts. In this, um, in this you know, run of the Gospels, that 18-month just saturation of the Gospels, one of the funnest boards I ever did. It's the first time I... I'd talk with a without a whiteboard, gosh, in years, right? I had a whiteboard one time. Maybe some of you guys remember it. That had uh, that had you know one of the first times I spoke on this it might have been an accelerant. I can't remember. That had um, I I went through the chronological order of like the last few weeks of Jesus' life, and I put you know like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John on a big board, and I start putting in all the you know the indicators, you know the you know on the way to Jerusalem things that happened there, and um, you know you know Thomas's comment, you know hey let's all go to Jerusalem and die with Jesus, right? And and you know we had the the triumphant entry into into Jerusalem, right? We had that stuff, and we had you know Jesus losing his mind and and scattering you know the people in the temple, right? I mean, you know, throwing a temper tantrum in the temple right after, right after the crowd's like, hey, this guy, you know, Messiah, you know, Hosanna, Hosanna, right? Declares war on the people that he knew could, could take his, his earthly life all the way up through, you know, the upper room. And, and I, I put it all in the whiteboard and I found, I, there's an interesting thing here. I, I'm gonna, I wanna like beseech you to, 
put in your weekly schedule pursuit of the heart of God. Right? Um, in, in Proverbs is a great uh, quote, Proverbs 22-ish. Um, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the glory of kings to seek a matter out. Right? So it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. I find with, with God that um, he, he has us positioned perfectly to be able to seek him out and find him, yet not with so much information that it's like a no-brainer. Because freedom of choice to God is important. When I, when I walk through the order of the night he was betrayed, and, and um, in particular how we went through um, giving the disciples and us the most front edge knowledge of the history of humanity the, and, and the plan for humanity that could ever be written. I mean, John 14, 15. 16, 17. I, you know, I, I could have up on my whiteboard all the notes. I mean, for us to, if we're going to talk identity, it is not hard for us to find in Scripture that our identity in Christ is as adopted sons and daughters of the Most High. I mean, can we, is that, is that, I'm trying to, I think I can see everybody. I mean, are we, are we somehow settled with that concept at all? I can't tell. This is going to be a little interactive. Uh, Sherry's over here. By the way, I'm going to, where am I at time-wise? Good. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to leave like five or ten minutes for like three questions, FYI. So Sherry's got the prophetic mic. If you've got a question, you know, go over and give it to her or raise your hand at the end. We'll go ahead. So we'll, we'll do this stuff. But I'm really looking for some interaction here because I, I want to understand who I'm talking to, right? So I really mean this because here's the deal. If we don't, no offense, but the concept of us being sons of the, of, of the Most High is not controversial. It is not like one of the hidden things in Scripture. It is right there. It is, it is so blatantly right there that for us to not have that concept is close to God to be a choice. And, we, and listen, this isn't even me, too. I just opened up to where I'm at. I'm in a cave, man. God's like, Dave, what are you doing here? I'm, miser I'm, I'm hurt, God. I kind of want out. I don't know if I want to play this, Right? Not quite. So I, I understand, like, where we can be sometimes in our lives. But I don't know if we have a shot. And Sherry mentioned today the ecclesia. I don't know if we have a shot from the bride of Christ to impact a culture that has no clue of their identity. If we have no clue of our identity. And the reason we don't have an excuse, Romans 1, is because it's all right there. We could, talk John, we could talk the entire book of the Gospels. Pretty easy to see. We can go Galatians. We can go Ephesians. Not to mention Romans. I mean, if you want to talk about a wonderful book to read, I mean, of all the books to read, I mean, Romans? Are we in Romans? Yeah, does anybody, like, have a thing inside him that says, I want to really know what's really going on. Not the stuff I have playing on in my cycle, in my ears, but what's really going on? What's the real deal? It's that really going on, the real deal is where we find hope. There's no way I stand here without any concept of my identity in Christ as being a son of the Most High, an adopted son of the Most High. Adopted, grafted in, co-heir. It's one thing for us to um, to have an understanding that's probably the case. I remember, uh, Nick, are you here? Where's Nick? Hey, buddy. Yeah, it's good to see you. Welcome home, buddy. I did a board one time, and I had his sister, Allie, right? Like on one side of the board was beliefs, and then on the other side of the board was behavior, and a big car wreck <laughs> in between the two. Because identity is, look, can look in our lives, my life as it stands right now. If you're close to me, you probably know Dave's bled. You've seen things, you've heard things out of my mouth this year that you've never heard. That you must have said, my God, what's going on with that man? He is in a tough, tough place. Am I wrong?
2022, if I could beseech my friends, a lot of people here, I got a lot, I know a lot of people online. Um, I got a lot of, listen, if you've reached out to me this week and said you're tuning in, thank you. One of the things in 2021 that also happened was um, I become a friend to some of our war fighters. Um, what we know about our nation and our world um, turned on its head in September 20, uh, um, uh, 2001 and initiated a 20 year war. And um, I'm, uh, I developed some really close relationships with, with some of our, 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 our war fighters that, that were there the whole time. Um, another, I don't know, I don't want to delay here on, on too much. If you can hear, hear this, because I, I'm, I, I hope what I'm doing, I'm giving a snapshot of, of your life at, at your level, right? The reason I worry about giving the word of my testimony is because I don't want anybody thinking what Dave's calling mantle is, is my calling mantle. No. Who, who, who you are uniquely able to, to impact is, is different than me. Right, we're talking identity, right? Um, you know, and so you know these 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 guys that have killed a lot of people. I, I know I know I personally am in pretty deep relationship with men that have killed hundreds, killed. They have stories that we don't want to talk about. It's not going to show up in your movies. In the middle of all this stuff with with with. Our realities, this is your life, right? So if you think about, hey, if, if, if you've been through some tough trauma this year, um, understanding that while you're going through your tough trauma, the people around you, maybe too. Interesting thing took place is our war fighters have figured out that their PTSD is the same as ours. It's just a different cause. I don't know where that, I don't know where that means, where that lays. Preamble to identity. Understanding what's really going on. How heaven really views me, you, individually. And then what the plan is for that identity. Us to understand our identity is as a son of the Most High God. That If that's not mind-boggling, I don't know what is. I mean, where are we at with God? I mean, creator, lover, strict, marvelous. <laughs> what words? Has a plan. Let's get into this. Where are we at? There's something took place at the cross that's understated. And I, I have talked about this before. I'm going to talk about it again. Luke, Luke uh, 22. 35. I've, from this, from over there, I've made this pitch before. Notice Jesus, when he quotes scripture in Luke and Mark, it wasn't Isaiah 23, or 53, for he was bruised with our transgressions. He was wounded for our iniquities. We, 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 we have that reality of what the cross is about, I think, pretty well down. We know that Jesus died on the cross for our, right? Everybody could say that, and you, and, and, but he didn't quote that. He quote, quoted Isaiah 61, which is, a, which is a clue to something that's really going on at the cross that is released at the cross that is very understated. And I, I, I have more than a working theory. I think the reason why our identity is so elusive to us, even as believers, is there is a great amount of energy coming from the father of lies to conceal that matter. A tremendous amount of energy. I, I don't know if there's more energy coming from the father of lies to deceive the sons and daughters. Scripture says even the elect than our identity, who we really are. The rest of this stuff is secondary. The bio 
is secondary, right? I mean, what, you know, we, we have these ways of identifying our identity by the stars, right? Is, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what a Capricorn is. I, you know, I'm a Capricorn. Okay, you know, candy corn, maybe you're candy corn. I hear Capricorn. When somebody says they're Capricorn, I hear candy corn. I don't even know what it is. Uh, you know, Kodiak signs, right? We must be talking, I think they're stars, right? So, so somebody has concluded their identity is tied up into the alignment of the stars. Our identity is tied up into polarity. That's an interesting little concept, actually. So we, we, start, we start identifying with the polarity of stars. Well, if you were born in this month, that means you're like this. Huh. We have all kinds of personality, con, con, you know, uh, what do you call them? Uh, tests. I want to find out how I am, who I am. And you're this. You're a uh, A dominant. You're a uh, C. You're a B. You're a uh, uh, 8 slash 2. You're a uh, 7 slash 1. You're a uh, 3 slash 8. You know, I don't, you know, I, I hear this. People keep telling me, well, you're an eight. Okay. Uh, I'm an eight. That's all I am. All right. Far out. But is that our identity? If, if we keep getting distracted, if we put no energy, no thoughts, Jesus put it this way, when the rains come, the foundation is wiped down. And I can tell you, my friends, the rains came. And my, f I pray my foundation stayed solid, but I can tell you my, my, my building was closing in. The only thing that I, I feel like my family at least can say is at least dad demonstrated an element of faith and trust in Father God, in the Godhead, that allows him to keep going. One of the things we're going to use, if we use this, Dave's, you know, the, the prophet, one of the things I've learned throughout this year is anything that I've gone through, culture is going through. The amount of trauma I see out there If we don't open up, if we don't open up ourselves to feel what's being felt out there, we're living in a little bit of a bubble. What we have to offer, Romans puts it this way, all of creation, this is, <laughs> that our identity as sons and daughters of the Most High should not be in dispute. There's no way to put it in dispute. It's right there. How we apply that identity, although, is a different matter. In the same book in Romans 10, read Romans 10, man. I mean, really read it. When I say set aside time to study who God really is, you're going to find that he is pretty cool at laying out a trail of breadcrumbs. And that if we keep walking down the trail of breadcrumbs, what's going to happen is we're going to still learn. We're going to learn. We're going to learn. We're going to, oh. We're going to have that. We're going to have this. We're going to, we're going to see things that we didn't see the day before that we can apply to our very lives and be able to sustain times of trouble. I think I just skipped a step where I was going with that, and that's the problem with not having notes. Let's go. Watch what happens here. Um, and if, you've, if this is redundant for some of you, I'm sorry. Um, and he said to them, when I sent you out without money bag, knapsack, and sandals, did you lack anything? And they said, nothing. Remember what took place. Jesus incorporates the disciples in pretty quickly. He sent the disciples out. There, is a, there should be a clue to us how God's motivational heart for us to impact the people that are around us to the glory of the Most High God. He's willing for us to go out really quickly. Paul the Apostle himself, when he, was Saul, he went from Saul of Tarsus and in three days was on the, on the streets preaching Jesus. Three days. Going to arrest, going to Damascus to arrest Christians, to bring them back to whatever was going to happen to them. Families, right? Encounter with Jesus in three days. This does not have to be a 10, 20, 30, 40-year training ground. 
In fact, if you, wanna, if you want me to be real forthcoming, I think we are very slow sometimes at the Bride of Christ. I think we think we continually need too much training. We're getting the training. Read your scripture. You got it. It's right there. Right there to see. Just read. It's okay. It's English. Work on what you do understand. I don't have to, I don't have to go on things I don't understand. Let me work on what I do understand. Father, <laughs> give me something. Watch this. So he had sent them out all this time, right? Notice one thing when Jesus had been sent the disciples out. Whenever in the Gospels, I mean, do you see anywhere in the Gospels where the disciples themselves are, um, are persecuted? In the Gospels. I'm not aware of any scripture where disciples themselves are persecuted. Who was the one that persecuted in, in the Gospels? Who was the one that was there trying to kill? How many times? Several times. Jesus himself, right? Right? There's a, there was an element of protection going on here. Watch, watch what happens here. So he said nothing. No, you sent us out. We didn't need anything. But now, he who has a money belt, let him take it. And likewise, a, sa a knapsack. And he who has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say to you, this, much, this which is written must still be accomplished in me. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And Jesus makes this statement, for things concerning me have an end. <laughs> that scripture has been relegated to the shelf for a long time. I think we need to pull it off the shelf. That's a fascinating statement, what just took place right there. When I sent you out before, we're talking identity. The cross is more than about Isaiah 53. Here's a, here's a thing I love about Isaiah 53. He was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Why, when I stand before God as a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, like in 2021, I will say this. There's, I would not understand the level of understanding I had before this year, the level of understanding I have after this year is coming up. The level of compassion, Jesus, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Where do you think his compassion came from? Again, allowing ourselves to feel. Open ourselves up enough to feel what somebody else is feeling. Feel it. Give yourself permission to feel it. Because something took place at the cross more than just our redemption from our sins. Jesus said, for I go to be made as a transgressor. One of the titles of the book uh, is um, The Transgressor. And things concerning me come to an end. Well, what things? Pretty easy for us to say, well, you mean your, your life on earth as a, as, a, as a human man? No, I think so. Otherwise, in Luke and Mark, when he says, today I tell you this scripture is fulfilled, he probably would have quoted Isaiah 53 if that was all it was about. But it wasn't. Set the prisoners free. Heal the brokenhearted. So that you, when you are set free, can do what? You connecting on this at all? Where are we at? I can't tell. In Isaiah 61, Jesus at the, is saying at the cross, I'm going to do a work here. Yeah, I'm going to redeem mankind but I'm going to empower and release my sons and daughters in their identity. The question becomes, at what level are we willing to pick that identity up? I can't stay up here and tell you that it's easy. It is not, that I can tell. Love to. Now I tell you, if you have a sword, if you have a cloak, sell it and buy a sword. You think he's talking about swords? He's definitely not. 
right? I don't want to get political here, but I don't understand the concept of, of arming ourselves physically. Why? Jesus, Jesus is saying this, man, by, if, you, if you have a cloak, sell it, buy a sword. You know, Peter, somebody says, oh, I got two swords right here. Yeah, that's enough. That's not even what I'm talking about. Right? Our, our, our fight is with who? Flesh and blood? What's going on out there? What is our role with out there? As disempowered, what, what's the Kodiak? What's, what's some of the signs? Let me get another one. Pi, Pi, Pisces? Is that one? What is your role as a Pisces? What do you think you're going to go out there as a Pisces and do? I don't, even, I don't even know if I read what a Pisces is. I don't know what it is. Is that the horse? What is it? It's a fish? Some of this, I want to use a word here. I'll use the word stuff. I was going to use another S word. Doesn't make a lot of stinking sense to me. But as an empowered son of the Most High, daughter of the Most High, at what level do we understand? At what level? Um, so I was, I mean, I was, I, you know, nervous as heck uh, coming into this morning. It's like, man, I got no notes. Man, I got no notes. We got a topic here, you know, <laughs> understanding our identity in Christ, <laughs> and I got no notes. 2.30 this morning, um, I laid there and I said to God, I said, you know, because I, too, like, wrestle with identity. And I, I've been aware, Michael, Keish, Rob, Hannah, um, I've been aware that my character isn't developed to the point that I can handle all that heaven has to offer me. <laughs> I never put it that way till 2.30 this morning. I'm laying there like, you know, you know, God, I, I don't know if I should be, I, I can go out there and just do what I always do. I can talk identity and we can talk Romans 8. I can tell you all creation eager to waste the revealing of the sons of God. How important is our identity? When Paul can make a statement in Romans 8 that says all of creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. Now, what kind of power statement is that? And what do the sons of God do with that? I mean, I've quoted this scripture so many times from this stage, and I can keep talking about that. It also says in that same run, for creation itself was subjected to futility, not willingly. Whew. So, you know, if we get up on our high horse, we're sons of the God, we're near, they're far. They're, you know, going to hell in a handbasket, right? I, I, I know people that are very critical of culture, very, right? Got it, got it coming to them. Meanwhile, Scripture says something different. Scripture says this, all of creation, uh, you know, for creation itself was subjected to futility, not willingly, but by he, capital H, who subjected it into the glorious hope of who? Of who? Do we know the scripture? Yeah, we got to know the scripture. Of who? <laughs> Do we know? Go there. Let's look it up. Don't take my word for it. I give you permission to not take my word for anything I'm saying. Please don't. If it's truth, it's truth. I'm just a man. Romans 8, is it? It ran on 29-ish. I forget exactly where it's at. I think 29 might be uh, um, creation earlier ways. But right in that run, it says, subjected into the glorious hope of the children of God. Who are we? Boy, I tell you, I'd like to ask everybody's first name right now. 
What is your name? All of creation is eagerly awaiting the revealing of you. Why? Why? For things concerning me must come to an end. All of creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. For creation itself was subjected to futility, not willingly. Jesus said, but now I go to be made as a transgressor. I'm going to once and for all pay the price for mankind and release something into culture. And we're that something by scripture. I don't want to really talk about that a whole lot. We've got time-wise, plenty of time. But I, I, I pray that this kind of starts to really sink in a little bit. We've, uh, I feel like um, we're, ent we're, we're exiting an age um, of, you know, forgive me, a nar very, very narcissistic bride. So one of the things Scott said, Dave, um, you know, full freedom, open the ear, what do you see for the year? Um, I want to give us a couple of, couple of challenges. Yeah, we're going to wrap her up pretty quick. I don't, need, I don't have to say a lot more than that. If you've got, I'm going to open up for questions. Um, get a few of them here. Um, if you, you know, somebody asked me a question, if you will. Hey, somebody asked me about my playlist, by the way. I'll, that'll kick it off. I'll give you the first question. If, if we can, if we can marinate in the concept that what we see is temporary and we don't walk by what we see, we walk by the unseen. Frequently, you and I, it's hard for us when we see the, the stuff that we see and hear the stuff that we hear and the information that comes in. Boom, boom, boom. When we've got the father of lies out there going, pulling out all the stops by any means necessary to trip you and I up and, and distract us away from a concept that says you are what? The most glorious title in the history of mankind, son of the most high God, creator of the universe, son, daughter, gender neutral, man. There's a lot, there's a lot of places I could go and suggest offering of, of what we could do with that information. It's the application of that information I wanna offer us to consider. One of the things I, um, I really celebrate, so like, um, like I can't tell a lot of stories about what I do for a living now because there's somebody else's stories that have been told to me and I would never want, people aren't props. I would never want to repeat a story and I got a hundred of them that would be impactful to hear but it's somebody else's story told to me in confidence and protection. Are we hearing people's stories? Sons and daughters of the Most High God, or are we just telling about our own? Do we even have any? 2022. If we, can I, can I, can I, can I beseech us? I can't promise you're not going to have a year like my year or worse. I'm not, I can't, I don't know. I can't reconcile it. I miss my boy and I blame myself for it. I'm just telling you. Sorry. I let that boy down. You don't want to hear that, do you?
This is the reality of life. We got to quit skating around it, man. Let's drop the pretenses, shall we? Can we have hard conversations one to another and be vulnerable? I'm dealing with war fighters that sent their friends to die. Reality. Somebody's dealing with seven and eight year old girls who've been molested at home in their homes. Do we open ourselves up to that level? Or is that somebody else's job? We see culture suffering in a great way. And by Scripture, by His marvelous plan, we get to do something about it. Not own it. When I'm things, I, and I'll just, I'll give you honesty, I mean, I find that the stories are biomagnifying in me, right? So, like, I've heard a bunch of people say, David, I just see the sadness all over you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sad. I can't find a way out of it. And the stories will biomagnify. But, the, and I, I tell you this because the only, the only thing that keeps us engaged, the only way I was able to get on that airplane, and the only reason I'm, I'm, we're heading out Tuesday, back into the fray. I'm heading to Bragg. I'm going to spend a week there. Back into the game. Back into the fray. Why? Here's my notes. One of the things I think in a human nature, I'll close with this, um, seven minutes, so give me a couple questions here. Um, if we could all go back to the time where six, seven, eight, nine years old, I, mean, I don't know what you guys, but for me, I was, I was always trying to be the hero of my own story at that age, right? I had, uh, you know, I was going to be the pitcher that was striking out the guy in game seven. I was going to be the linebacker that put the hit on the quarterback, the, you know, pumble ball or intercepted and ran it back for the touchdown. I was going to be the guy over the rim, slam dunking the basketball. Uh, I was going to be the great warrior out there taking on all people and, you know, taking out the enemy. I mean, that was the way I viewed things, right? So whether you're there, G.I. Joe, or, you know, the other extreme over here, maybe, maybe you're, uh, maybe you're like, you like the, you know, Ken and Barbie stuff, right? So, hey, my pristine little world here, whatever it is, Maybe you played house. Maybe you played this. Maybe you played that. Uh, if you played doctor, I don't want to hear about it. In that, in that place, I believe inside the human psyche, inside, there's a gift given to each and every one of us in this room that says this. Accomplish things greater than yourself. Because that's what God's offering. Greater is he Our culture is hungry for heroes, man. And the heroes for culture are sitting right here. Laugh with those who laugh. Mourn with those who mourn. Get in the game. At, at what your calling is, not mine, don't compare yourself to, please, don't compare yourself to anybody. What is, what is, what is, what is your sonship? What is the unique thing? It's, oh, here's a thought I had last night at 2.30 in the morning. God is a master chef, and each one of us is like this massively prepared, like, like, like meal of different, different elements. He, he, like, he doesn't cook the same meal twice. It is a remarkable thing that in the history of mankind, no two of us are identical. I don't care what we look like. Even if you have an identical twin, I know a few of them. They're not identical at all. Why? In his magnificence, he's created each one of us with a unique blend of his DNA. To do what? Glorify him, commune with him, celebrate with him. I had a place one time, last comment, of he just hit me at midnight. I just, the love. I'm like, what? I'm an idiot. Don't, Father, can you stop? I know, I know. 
How many of us have we play in our mind our mistakes? I coached for 27 years. You know what plays in my mind? The places I screwed up. The games I lost as a coach. Not, not the concept that 26 or 27 years were winning records. Case was right there. I mean, the times that I just jumped on teams and I was a jerk. That's what replays in my mind as a coach. Is that, <laughs> is that what's replaying in our mind? Because what that does is it, it, it moves in. It, this is the great, the, the great secret. That moves us into a place of being disqualified. So we disqualify ourselves because we view ourselves as being this over here. And while someday, you know, when I come out of this, then God, I'll do something. Well, Paul, in three days, it's not a Sunday. I don't care how old you are today. If, if we can kind of just, in 2022, let's together, bride of Christ. Father, what is my identity in you? Okay, that's good. First question. Somebody raise a hand. I'll ask, I'll ask the question. Just can somebody raise a hand? Anybody raise a hand? There you go. Thank you. Wow. The question my sister was asking is my playlist. Here's a little tool. The only one I'll give that I've, I've found for me this year survived me through the year. Um, I found that um, I developed a playlist on, is it, what is it called? Can, Hannah, what's that called? Is it Apple Tunes? What is that? My playlist? iTunes? Um, a about a 20 song playlist that applied the lyrics and the tone of the song applied perfectly to where to where I was in the as a spirit man. So that when I got on an airplane, I listened to that playlist. When I and I was able to to go into a city. So I'm not an itinerant minister guy. I'm not going in giving stuff and then leaving. I'm going in to set up camp. Set up impact zones. We ain't leaving. We're going in to make a difference. We're not awareness based. We're doing something about it based. Not in our own strength, our own flesh. I wanna, I wanna offer that to you. Find songs that are not about you, what he did for you. And if they are, change the words to what he did for them or us. At some point, now this is where I was going with that before. I've got a master class we're teaching. Now we're in a couple hundreds. Uh, some people in here are in it. We're teaching people how to live a life not totally focused on our own stuff. To take a segment of our time and set it aside, not focused on our comfort, not focused on our thoughts, our thought processes, but to live for something bigger than ourselves, which is what Scripture is offering in identity, is what creation's waiting for. I'll take one question. I got 26 seconds if we have any, but you know, I'll give you about five seconds to raise a hand. If anybody has anything they're pressing on, I'll take it. Far out. If anything, um, at least know this that. It's okay to be vulnerable one to another. To speak something to somebody that you want. I mean, you know how many people I've told what I really feel about with Nicholas? I just told you something. I can't speak out loud. It's too hurtful. Do you know vulnerability out there goes a long ways? I've had more than one of our national heroes set the terms is I'm only going to talk with you if you talk with me here's my worst 
I've had three times in 2021 where I heard stories from our national heroes that their eyes were right on me to see how I was going to handle that story. And I'm telling you, you don't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear it. But what they were looking for my eyes was, can this man walk this out with me? Or is he going to be judgmental or horrified? Or, whoa, 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 you need a pro. I believe in counseling, by the way. Don't take this wrong. But we're pros. If we carry the wisdom of God in our hearts and minds. Father, I just, um, Father, I, I, I trust you that this is what you wanted. Father, I just, just thank you for the abundance of love and grace in the room and for this community. Father, I just pray that this morning does not come back void. Father, that if there be some in this room that choose a higher, let there be some, let there be all, that choose a higher how to forgive ourselves and how to walk in forgiveness and walk and be people of repentance. Show us how to not be grumpy. Show me how to not be grumpy. Lord, let your spirit just descend as your spirit that walks inside us just cries out. Father, in particular, we draw to your attention, culture. The world that we live in, that you've allowed us the snapshot of time to be a part of. Father, I pray if there's anything that we go from awareness to do something about it within your calling, your mantle, your assignments. Father, let our eyes be on you. Father, remind me, pursue you. Learn your ways. In Jesus' name, we bind fear and lose freedom.